In 1919, in post-World War I Germany, Walter Gruppius founded the Bauhaus, a new type of school with a vision to bring the artist and craftsman together onto a culturally equal playing field, where together they could pioneer neoteric designs for architecture, furniture, and all forms of visual communication, utilizing new technologies and modern materials. For Gruppius, design was about moving forward towards a more equitable and structurally beautiful global society. Although the school only operated for 14 years before being forced to close by Hitler's Nazi party, the impact and legacy of the Bauhaus cannot be overstated. Much of the architecture we see in cities today echoes the straight line geometry and emphasis on glass, concrete and steel that the Bauhaus focused on as they sought to steer away from timber, brick and stone. In the Bauhaus, design was about modern simplicity and practical functionality, a major influence on the current minimalist movement. The Bauhaus was also influential in reshaping typography, quite literally, with type designers like Herbert Bayer, Joseph Albers and Juice Smith leading the way in experimenting with typeface designs that bucked tradition and often did away with unnecessary serifs, these bits. In the Bauhaus archives, typographic sketches and layouts have been preserved and in 2018, Adobe recruited world-renowned German typographer Eric Spiekermann to oversee a small group of international design students to recreate these lost fonts, finishing digitally what began with pencil and paper almost a hundred years earlier. Brought the historical significance the Bauhaus had on type into the present as five young designers stepped into the shoes and minds of the Bauhaus design pioneers whose influence had been seen in type all over the modern and postmodern world. Speakerman has, for a long time, worked to stay up to date with ever-changing technology, being among the first in Germany to get a Macintosh computer back in 1985 after losing all his metal type equipment in an overnight fire in 1977. While Steve Heller says, Many modern designers have cultural Alzheimer's and they are limited by their lack of historical knowledge. Spiegelman is not one of them. Spiegelman still operates P98A, a large gallery and letterpress workshop in Berlin. Using wooden and metal letter types and presses, Spiegelman insists, much like the Bauhaus did, that artistry and craftsmanship should still involve a tactile experience, especially for mass production. With his passion and expertise in traditional letterpress, as well as the on-the-pulse approach to new technology within the typographic sphere, Speakerman was the perfect choice to oversee Adobe's project in digitizing alphabets from the Bauhaus sketches. Any work of art history is one of reconstruction. This was certainly the case, both literally and figuratively, for Speakerman and his team. The Bauhaus was a big proponent of the design philosophy, form follows function and without properly crafted and recreated form, the typeface sketches from the archives left as they were would ultimately fail in their design function as an effective form of visual communication. The five design students chosen to work with Speakman, all from different countries and cultures, echoed the global approach to design that the Bauhaus had originally been aiming for. Is it any wonder that the most famous Bauhaus typeface was titled Universal? Bauhaus wanted to democratize design and promoted a meaningfully humanistic approach to design that carried a social conscience in the way design would impact on communities. This was the very sentiment expressed in the original First Things First manifesto as Ken Garland, along with other designers, began to raise concerns over the direction that design had been heading. Six years later, when the First Things First manifesto was renewed in the year 2000, Eric Speakerman was among the 33 esteemed signatories re-establishing the concern that design had become over-commercialized and could and should be used for more noble purposes. Norwegian type designer David Key criticized the manifesto, saying he felt it discriminated against many good designers just trying to get by. And while Speakerman said he signed eagerly alongside many of his heroes, he was also quick to point out in the foreword of David Berman's book, Do Good, that the manifesto did contain some slight misgivings when balancing doing good with keeping his 70 plus employees in meaningful paid work. For Speakerman, good design work holds in tension the endeavor to do good with the burden of providing economically for a person's family. So, under the brilliant guidance of Eric Speakerman, five typographical artifacts from the Bauhaus archives have been given new digital life, affectionately named after their original designers, Karl Marx, Joshmi, Zantz, Reros, and Alphan. 
Consequently, the typographic influence of the Bauhaus will continue to reach even further into the postmodern world as designers all over the planet utilize these five historic typefaces in any visual communication endeavor they choose, and hopefully, it'll be for changing the world for the better, as all good design should. <laughs>